Yet I have been a shea, Alicia, Sinigin, and Shia. Can't let you in a sling door, touching a bushes chain, but on a dash of chay door, top behind a dash and alley. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Indigenous Visit Day. My name is Alicia Sinigin, and I'm currently the Miss Indigenous NAU 2020. So before we begin, we're going to go ahead and start out with an opening prayer. God, thank you for this day. Thank you for bringing us together here for the Indigenous Visit Day event. We thank you for this opportunity you have brought every student here. Bless these students, mentors, parents, and faculty with knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Guide us and protect us in the right path to have a successful semester and future. We put today into your hands. Amen. So before we continue, we're going to go ahead and give the uh, NEU line acknowledgement. Northern Arizona sits at the base of the San Francisco peaks on homelands sacred to Native Americans throughout the region. We honor their past, present, future generations who have lived here for millennia and will forever call this place home. Thank you. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the sixth annual Indigenous Visit Day. My name is Becca Arvarado, and I am the coordinator for Native American and Diversity Recruitment with Northern Arizona University. I get to serve students in Alaska, as well as Northeastern Arizona, as well as our tribal education offices. Um, I'm a graduate of NAU as well. I graduated along with the class of 2017 with my degree in psychological sciences and a minor in ethnic studies. Originally, I'm from Colorado, but I grew up in Northern Arizona. And so coming to school in Flagstaff was a perfect middle ground to visit family both ways. Now we're really excited to be able to share some resources with you for Native American, Alaskan Natives, as well as Native Hawaiian students. Um, and so for our agenda today, you will be able to learn about admissions, academic and scholarship information. We will also be sharing this time with our campus partners with the Office of Indigenous Student Success, as well as the Native American Cultural Center. And then we will end the day with a student panel. And we encourage you as you have questions throughout the time we have together, please send your questions to admissions at nau.edu. We would also like to note that throughout the presentations you'll see today, you'll see um, that these were taken pre uh, times of the ongoing pandemic. And so with that in mind, you won't see a lot of folks wearing masks or practicing social distancing. We want you to know that NAU is committed to the health and safety of our students. And we are complying with CDC um, guidelines, including proper mask wearing, social distancing, as well as mitigation testing. And so without further ado, I'll go ahead and pass it over to Emily so you can um, learn about her. Hello, my name is Emily Jansen, and I serve as an admissions officer here with Northern Arizona University. I mostly get to work with students here in Arizona in Graham, Greenlee, and Gila counties, and also students in New Mexico. Um, so I moved with my husband um, about a year ago here to Flagstaff from Illinois, and um, that's still where most of our family lives, but we absolutely love the NAU community and Flagstaff, so I'm really excited to share with you today. So jumping right into um, an overview of Flagstaff, if you've never been here before, you may or may not know that Flagstaff is a lot different than other parts of Arizona. We are at 7,000 feet elevation, so we do get all four seasons, um, which I absolutely love. The temperatures are starting to cool off now and the leaves are starting to turn colors. Um, in the winter, we get about 100 inches of snow every year. And in the summer, we've never had a recorded day hit 100 degrees, which is very rare for Arizona. Um, and with that, we are also surrounded by the world's largest ponderosa pine forest, and we have the beautiful San Francisco peaks that surround us as well. So there are a lot of um, awesome opportunities to uh, get outside and explore the area. We have been ranked the number one best college town in Arizona um, and really highly across the U.S. as well. We have a great downtown area that is um, just about a 15 minute walk from campus, so really easy to get to. They have a lot of local shops and restaurants to check out as well. 
But surrounding Flagstaff, there are so many different beautiful areas to um, explore and uh, get into nature as well. So we have the Flagstaff Urban Trail System, which is a series of interconnecting trails that run through campus, into town, into the mountains. So you can easily hop onto a trail and explore the beauty that surrounds Flagstaff. We're of course near the Grand Canyon. It's just about an hour and a half drive to get there um, from campus. So it's really awesome to be so close to one of the natural wonders of the world and um, uh, be able to go there for a day hike or even just to watch the sunset as well. We are within three hours of 10 other national parks and monuments as well. Um, one of my favorite national monuments to go to is Wupaki National Monument, which is near Flagstaff. Wupaki actually means tall house in Hopi, and this is a um, great site with about 35 acres of um, archaeology. and. Um, this was built by ancient Pueblo people around 500 AD. So these places that I mentioned are just a few of the places around Flagstaff that you can go to um, check out the beauty that surrounds us. But now focusing back in on the university itself, since we were founded in 1899, we have been focused on accessibility, and we've actually been ranked sixth in the nation for awarding degrees to Native students. As you'll see on the screen, we have about 22,000 students here at our Flagstaff campus and about 31,000 students total across all campuses um, statewide and online students as well. Um, you'll also see from the screen about 60% of our students are right from right here in Arizona and almost 40% come from out of state. So um, we do have representation of students from every state across the nation and over a hundred different tribes are represented, it, represented in our student body. So after learning about the campus, a common question we get from students is, is it required for you to live on campus? The answer is no, but about 89% of our first year student population does decide to live on campus in order to just adjust to the campus culture. Um, within our campus, it is so convenient to live within our housing. As Emily mentioned, our campus is about a mile and a half long and about a half a mile wide, so it's so easy to navigate to and from your classes, as well as food, which we'll talk about in just one moment. Now with our campus, it is also really easy for you to build a community. We have a residential-based college model, which allows you to live amongst folks who are studying the same thing as you. That means not only do you get to know folks that you are entering the campus community with, um, but you also get to learn um, and connect with folks that you'll be entering the career force with as well. We also strive to be an inclusive campus, and that means we have gender inclusive housing. So as you are building your home away from home, you are really to able be in a space where you feel comfortable and confident. Now, if you do decide to live on campus, it is required to have a meal plan. That's something that we've always really required in order to ensure that sense of food security for our students. You can personalize your dining experience, and we do offer a variety of vegetarian, vegan, and gluten-free options for those with dietary restrictions. And we have meal plans that range from 14, 19, um, unlimited, or 10 meals per week. And so that way you're really able to um, have as much as you need to eat um, without having too much. Now with that, we also have our dining dollars. So if you would like to supplement your dining plan, you can use your dining dollars at any of our campus retail dining locations. Um, and this is untaxable money on top of the dining that you already have. Now we do have all two all you care to eat facilities on campus on both North and South campus for your convenience. And our retail dining locations span everything from Starbucks to Pizza Hut, and then also to Denny's and a variety of other options as well. You'll see on the screen that we also have our Starship food delivery robots. Um, these were new to our campus last year and we were the second institution in the United States to adopt a fleet of about 30. Um, our fleet has grown to around 60 now. And with our Starship food delivery robots, you are able to order your food and the robots will bring it to you anywhere across campus. And so it's really convenient to get your meals as well. Now with that in mind, while you are not only participating in the dining and living experience on campus, we also encourage you to get involved in traditions. Um, our first tradition that you can take part in is one of my favorites, and it was one of my favorites to participate in as a student. This is the NAU Letters. 
For the NAU letters, this help happens on South Campus in their South Fields. We are able to create the block letters for NAU on the grassy fields, and we invite all of our students to fill out those block letters in order to take a big old family photo, and we take a bird's eye family photo of that um, NAU letters. And then we print that out on different postcards so you students can send it to your family and your friends back home. We also have the running of the freshmen, which is pictured on the screen. This takes place on South Campus as well in our Sky Dome. And for the running of the freshmen, um, this happens during the first home football game. We clear out the, f the field, and then we have all of our first year students run across the field in order to bring in the new football season. And so it's just a really great way for students to get out and participate and cheer on their lumberjacks as well. You'll note that we also had Miss Indigenous NAU start the day off for us today. Um, that has been a long standing tradition of around 30 years that it has been on campus. Um, and so we really celebrate this Miss Indigenous NAU pageant and it allows students from all different native cultures to come and compete um, for this title. Now, along our NAU traditions, we have a number of different clubs and activities and I'll go ahead and pass it over to Emily so she can share a little bit about that with you today. Yeah, so there are many other different ways to get involved on campus other than participating in traditions. We do have over 400 different clubs and organizations, and there are really a wide range to these. There are academic clubs so that students can get more involved in their program. We also have um, sports clubs, faith-based clubs, also cultural clubs like the Hapa Hawaiian Club or Miss Indigenous NAU that Becca just mentioned. With um, these clubs, if you take a look at all of these on our website and you have an idea for a club or an organization that we don't yet offer, you can always start your own club with just a few friends and a staff or faculty member as an advisor. As far as athletics at NAU, we do have 15 NCAA Division I teams and our athletes participate in the Big Sky Conference as long as um, along with the Western Athletic Conference for swimming and diving. Some of our recent champions include men's cross country. They were three-time national champions and then runners up this past year. And then our women's swimming and diving are seven-time defending champions. If you um, choose to cheer on your fellow Lumberjacks, you can go to any home game with your Jacks card or your NAU ID. Awesome, thanks for that, Emily. Switching gears a little bit to our academic excellence, you can see a number of stats that we are particularly proud of on this screen, including our full-time faculty amount, as well as our average class size of about 35 students per class across the university. I'd also like to focus on our 19 to one student to faculty ratio. Um, this means for every 19 students, we have a faculty member who is ready to support you, not only in your experience as an undergraduate student, um, but also as you're entering the career force into your future career. Um, I can definitely attest to this. Not only did I have a professor within the Ethnic Studies Department that provided me with my first teaching experience, um, but they also were a reference for me on my first job after graduating college. And more recently, they served as a recommender for my graduate school application as well. And so you can see how the professors really invest their time um, and their energy into promoting their students' success. You can also see that we do have a number of different statewide and online locations, which Emily will talk about in just a moment. Um, but I'd like to focus a little bit on our academic colleges. Um, we have nine academic colleges overall, eight of which cater to our undergraduate studies, and we have nearly 100 different majors for you to choose from. Um, we have everything from forestry to psychological sciences to sociology and so on. Now, when you apply to NAU, you'll see on your application that we will ask for you to declare a major. Now, if you're not sure which major to declare, that's totally okay. You can declare a major of exploratory, and that just means that you'll re receive additional support from your academic advisor at our Gateway Student Success Center um, to help you decide what you would like to study at NAU. But if you are deciding that you would like to study within engineering, biomedical sciences, or sociology, for instance, you can declare your major, and you will naturally become a part of our, one of our academic colleges. Now, within our academic colleges, not only are you a member of the greater NAU community, but you're also a member of that smaller community within your academic college, and those are the folks that you will be graduating with. And so, for instance, if you are deciding that you would like to study finance, accountancy, or hotel and restaurant management, you'll be within the WA Frankie College of Business. 
If you are more focused on helping people and you would like to maybe declare a major in psychological sciences, um, criminology and criminal justice, or criminal justice in Indian country, um, you will be within our College of Social and Behavioral Sciences. And then for a final example, if you are interested in forestry, uh, maybe environmental sciences or biology, um, you will be within our College of the Environment, Forestry and Natural Sciences. And then you'll see at the end of the screen, we have our Honors College. Any major can apply to become a, pa a part of the Honors College. And after you are admitted to NAU, you can apply to the Honors College separately. Um, with the Honors College, it's just for students who would like a little bit more academic rigor and more smaller experiential based um, discussion classes. Um, and so you can apply for that opportunity upon your admission to NAU. Great, so beyond um, the Flagstaff campus, we also have statewide locations across Arizona for students to study in as well. So some of the programs highlighted are on the screen for you. These options provide great opportunities for students as cost-effective options, or if you'd like to stay a little bit closer to home. So you can definitely check out um, more of those programs offered on the um, website listed there. Along with statewide locations, we also have many different online programs. And NAU has been doing online um, programs and um, um, when we made the switch to online classes this spring, we were more than prepared um, for virtual learning and online teaching since NAU has been doing online programs for such a long time. Um, we have uh, traditional based programs for students online as well as competency based, which provide a more flexible personalized options for students as well. Awesome. Thanks, Emily. Um, now, how do we support our students? Um, alongside our involvement opportunities as well as our academic and research opportunities, we want to make sure that you feel supported as the whole student. And so we have a variety of different programming as well as resources to help make that happen. Um, the first of which is our tutoring. All tutoring is free on our campus, and you can access tutoring as often as you would like, and we would encourage it. We have two academic success centers on both North and South campus for your convenience, and we also have supplementary instruction as well. Our supplementary instructors are folks who have already passed the class that you are currently taking with an A, and they have been recruited by the professor in order to teach other students how to be successful as well. And so that's definitely one of the ways that I passed my Accounting 255 class by attending my supplementary instructor hours. Um, we also have mentoring, which is really important to our campus community. Uh, our peer mentors through peer jacks um, are mostly for out-of-state students, and you are matched with a peer jack mentor if you are out-of-state based off of where you're from and what you're studying. This is just an added layer of support so that you can learn from a peer on how to be successful in your transition from your hometown to the NAU campus as well. You can see that we also have a number of career development opportunities as well. Our career development opportunities are incredible and they span from resume workshops to mock interview building skills. And then we also have both career as well as graduate school fairs for our students. We also have this resource called Handshake. On Handshake, you'll be able to access all job opportunities that are available on campus, as well as surrounding the NAU campus as well. So you can look for job opportunities, both as a student and as a recently graduated uh, member of the NAU alumni community. Now, with all these services that I mentioned, they are free, as I mentioned with our tutoring, but with our career development office, you can also access these different resources up to a year after graduating from NAU for free of charge as well. And so not only are we committed to your success as a student, but also as your success um, as an alum of our university. Now we also celebrate the diversity of our students and we promote this by having a number of different inclusive measures. Um, the first of which is going to be our disability resources office. If you are entering the university with a 504 or an individualized education plan, and you would like to see what kind of accommodations NAU can offer you to be successful, you can reach out to our disability resources office without even accepting your offer of admission to NAU. We wanna make sure that you know that you will be promoted in terms of your success and your well-being as a student. And so you can contact them prior to even deciding if NAU is going to be your college choice. We are also a leading institution serving our veteran students, and we do have two different veteran services offices across campus in order to not only provide a community for our veteran students, um, but just to connect them with resources, um, especially concerning their GI Bill and how those funds are going to be dispersed. 
We also have our first generation programs. As Emily mentioned, we have an undergraduate community of about 21,000 students at our campus and about 46% of them identify as first generation, which means that they are the trailblazers going out and earning a four year degree, um, being the first in their family. We are recognized as a first forward institution and our first generation programs offer a number of different bridge programs, um, support programs and mentoring, as well as just generally promoting events that celebrate the first generation community at NAU. Now you can see on the screen that we have our Native American Cultural Center. You'll learn from both our Native American Cultural Center campus partners, as well as, our off as, well as from our Office of Indigenous Student Success. And then I'd just like to highlight our Office of Inclusion. We have the largest Office of Inclusion in the state of Arizona compared to our sibling institutions. Um, and this is an area where we are able to not only celebrate, but promote inclu inclusivity on campus, as well as host a number of different events just celebrating cultures and heritages that from all of our students' backgrounds. And so those are different ways that we promote the diversity and inclusivity of our campus overall. Now with our study abroad programs, um, should you decide that you would like to go explore other cultures in other countries, we would support you in doing that. We have partnerships in over 70 countries and 120 locations. And we also have traditional student exchange programs as well. So if you're like me, and I was a little nervous to be traveling abroad during my undergraduate experience, you can go to a university throughout the United States or even in Canada. But we absolutely encourage you, even if you're just a little interested, our study abroad programs host different information sessions when you're first getting into NAU. That way you can just explore your options without any commitment quite yet. And one of the programs that we would like to highlight as well is our interdisciplinary global programs, or IGP for short. Our IGP program is nationally recognized and it is for our STEM as well as our business majors. Um, within this program, it is five years one year is spent entirely abroad, and students who complete this program earn two degrees, one in their major of choice and then another in their language of choice. And so this is an incredible opportunity for any students who are interested in that long-term study abroad program, which NAU is ranked seventh in the nation for sending our students out for one year abroad study uh, abroad programs um, and supporting them along the way. And so with that, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Emily so she can share a little bit about our admissions criteria. So now that we've talked a little bit about programs, ways to get involved, and student success, now we'd like to talk about admission requirements and what we'll be looking for on the application. So for first year admissions, we'll be looking for just 16 core classes that you've taken throughout high school. And they are four years of English, four years of math, three years of a lab science, two years of a social science, one being US or American history, two years of the same second language, and then one year of a fine art or CTE. You can be missing up to two of these classes and still be considered for admission, as long as they're not in the same subject area or in math and science combined. And that's what we would call a deficiency. But based on these 16 core classes, we will calculate an unweighted core GPA for you. If you have a 2.5, you'll be considered for admission. And if you have a 3.0, you'll be guaranteed admission. So with that, we are test score optional, which means we do not require your ACT or SAT scores for admission or scholarships. But if you are able to take those tests, feel free to have those scores sent to us because they can always help you and they would never hurt you. We do have many transfer students come to NAU as well. So if you are considering transferring um, with your associate's degree, we look for a 2.0 GPA. Or if you've completed the AJAC or AGETSI, we look for a 2.5 cumulative GPA. I already mentioned the 2NAU program a little bit, but this offers a seamless transition from partner community colleges here in Arizona and some in Southern California to NAU. But whether or not you're thinking about being a transfer student, if you've taken any kind of college credit, such as dual enrollment or maybe AP classes, and you're wondering how those credits will transfer over to NAU, we recommend going to a helpful resource called Jack's Path, where you can plug in those credits and see how they will transfer over to NAU. But now moving along to cost, we really have a focus on predictability of cost here at NAU and we want to be transparent in all of our costs. 
So we have our tuition rates and additional costs listed as well. We do divide our tuition rates between where students live. So depending on if you're an Arizona resident, WUI, which I'll explain what that means in just a moment, or non-resident. So we have those yearly tuition rates listed. And then we also have additional costs listed as well. And these might be things like your fees, housing, meal plan, books and supplies. These are costs that can vary from person to person, just depending on maybe what meal plan you choose or where you choose to live on campus. But this is still a really good estimate for you. Um, and these are the yearly costs. So moving on to WUI, um, this stands for the Western Undergraduate Exchange, and this is a discounted tuition rate that we do offer to students in any of these golden states or regions. So um, it's about 40% less than the non-resident rate, and it does apply to all degree programs, and there's no separate application required for this. It'll automatically be granted to you. And then we'd also like to highlight, if you do identify within 22 federally recognized Arizona tribes, you can be granted in-state tuition and consideration for in-state scholarships. So we would encourage you to send us your CIB or tribal ID to have that updated on your account if that applies to you. Now for ways in order that we support you in um, the cost of your education, we do have our merit scholarships um, that are based for your tuition. So the first that I'll touch on is our Lumberjack Scholars Award. Um, for this scholarship, you must have Arizona residency, and all of the scholarships that I'll speak on today do look at the 16 core courses that Emily talked about. Within the 16 core courses for the Lumberjack Scholars Award, we have three pieces of criteria that are really important to meet. The first is that you're not missing any classes within your 16 core classes, or you don't have any deficiencies. The second piece is that you have no letter grade lower than a B. Um, this is really important because the third piece of criteria is that you have a 3.5 unweighted core GPA. And with those three pieces of criteria met, you can be eligible for the Lumberjack Scholars Award. Now to become eligible, we do allow for you to retake one of your classes, but we always recommend if you've already applied to NAU or if you are preparing to apply, to contact your admissions representative because we can help guide you through the different retakes that you should take advantage of in order to earn that scholarship. Now with this scholarship, it is 100% of tuition and there are two important dates that we would like you to be aware of in order to keep the scholarship if you are awarded the scholarship for the fall 21 semester. Now for the Lumberjack, we require these two dates to be met. And the first is February 10th. That's when we ask for your seventh semester transcript in order to verify that you are still eligible for the scholarship. And then the next one is important and we'll talk a little bit more about it um, in a moment, but it's May 1. That is National College Decision Day. And so you must accept your offer of admission to NAU in order to retain that eligibility for the scholarship as well as the other scholarships that I'll talk about. Now for our other scholarships, these are also merit-based, so off of those same 16 core classes, and you can see that they're divided between different columns. The first column is for Arizona residents, the second is for our students who are in the WUI program that Emily talked about, and then the third is for our non-resident students. Now across these different uh, scholarships, you'll see that there's a common theme in the minimum core GPA that is required to get the scholarship. So for the first row, you'll see that the minimum GPA that's required is a 3.5 core GPA. And you can either receive our Presidents, our WUI Gold, or our Presidents Excellence Awards for non-resident students. Now for our second row, the middle row, you'll see that we do require a 3.0 to a 3.49, and that's for the Deans, the WUI Blue, or the Presidents Non-Residence Award. And then for our last award for Arizona residents, we have the Opportunity Scholarship. This is uh, based off of a 2.9 to a 2.99 core GPA. And you can see the respective amounts for each of these scholarships that are listed underneath their titles. Now, these scholarships are renewable for all four years that you're attending the institution. And for all the scholarships that I talked about, including the Lumberjack, you don't have to fill out an additional application. When you apply to NAU and you report those 16 core classes, we not only consider you for admission, but we also will consider you for these scholarships as well. And so with that, you'll be notified if you are awarded these scholarships uh, via letter sent to your mailing address. 
Now for our transfer students, we also have a number of different scholarship opportunities, um, starting with our Phi Theta Kappa. This is available for both Arizona residents as well as WUI or non-resident students. Um, and you can see their corresponding amounts and you must apply for the PTK scholarship as well as be a member of the honors program with the PTK. Um, we also have our two NAU scholarship as well. Um, for the two NAU scholarship, you must be a part of the two NAU program for two years. Um, and this allows you to be eligible for that additional $2,000 of funding. And then for need-based aid, um, this is varying amounts of aid based off of your free application for federal student aid. And you can see that Arizona residents, WUI, and non-resident students are considered as well. Now, we always encourage our students to complete the FAFSA, um, but with that, our FAFSA opens up on October 1st, and then the priority date to meet is November 15th. I'll go ahead and turn it over to Emily so she can share a little bit about the next step. Yeah, so we'd really like to provide you with some helpful next steps going forward. Once you have applied and been admitted to NAU, if you have decided that NAU is the best fit for you and it's where you can picture yourself, we would encourage you to accept your offer. And you do this by paying a $250 enrollment deposit that secures your place as a student and opens up the rest of the next steps for you. So after you have accepted your offer, you can submit the housing application if you choose to live on campus. And with this housing application, you will get to select your roommate, your residence hall based on your residential college model, and also a meal plan as well. And then after that, you can complete priority enrollment. This is where you will set up an academic profile so that an academic advisor can be assigned to you and put together your first term's course schedule for you based on your academic goals. After that, you can then register for orientation, which takes place um, a few months before the beginning of the semester so that you can get all ready for um, the fall and um, your courses and everything going, coming into um, NAU. If you have more questions about next steps, you can feel free to um, go to the link or you can reach out to your admissions representative and we're happy to help you with next steps as well. And now I'm going to turn it back over to Becca to go over some helpful dates and a timeline. Awesome. Thanks, Emily. Um, so rounding out our presentation, we encourage you to take a look at the screen. Um, we have a number of different important dates that you should be aware of in your general admissions timeline. Um, it's important to note that everybody's admissions process is going to look a little bit different and your college journey is exactly what you make it. So we encourage you to take a look at this as just a suggested timeline that you should be aware of. Now our application for admission for the fall 21 semester already opened. Um, so we're excited for you to apply if you haven't already. Um, and the FAFSA opened as well as on October 1st. You'll see that our November 15 priority date is coming up. And what that priority date means is that if you apply to NAU by this date, and if you complete your FAFSA, as well as include the NAU school code on your free application for federal student aid, um, we can get you your financial aid award letter sooner, which means that you can make a more educated decision based on financial need about where you would like to attend university. Um, you'll see we have a number of other dates that you should be aware of that are ongoing. We encourage you to be checking your Louis account because we will put a number of different to-do list items as well as holds on your account so that you can be aware of them um, and you can just be prepared and informed. We also have May 1 as National College Decision Day that I mentioned. Um, this is a day that is recognized where students commit to the institutions that they will be attending. And so that way you can decide where you would like to um, attend university. Um, and with that, you can receive the support of our admissions representatives if you choose in a U. We also have a summer to-do list for you as well as a notification that our semester starts in August. And so, like I said, this can be your general timeline, but we do look forward to supporting you along the way and being there um, to help you throughout your college journey. And so with that, we'd like to round out our presentation by sharing a bit of a video with you so you can learn from one of our alums and learn about their experience at the institution. Thank you. In our ongoing Focus on Alumni series, Coconino High School principal Stacy Zanzuki talks about her love of Flagstaff and her time here at NAU. If I were to 
think about what a campus is supposed to look like for a university, this is what I would envision. From the first time she saw NAU, Stacy knew there was no going back. She didn't hesitate to trade in her San Diego beaches and sunsets for our San Francisco peaks and pine trees. I just fell in love with Flagstaff. I loved the fresh air, and we kept looking up at this big, bright blue sky with these big, puffy white clouds. It really made an impression on me, just about how clear and beautiful Flagstaff was. With NAU's support, along with her love of language and travels to Spain, Zansuki earned a bachelor's degree in Spanish education. I had a great guidance counselor. I had a, a several mentors that I met with often, and just the relationships with the professors really helped me know which path to take. I didn't feel like I was on my own trying to navigate and figure it out. I had a lot of support at NAU. With her undergraduate degree in hand, Zanzuki wasn't ready to bid NAU farewell just yet. I have great memories of my classes and courses. I also have really great memories of um, just being on the campus of NAU and being in a small environment where you really did know your professors. And I, I, I had a really great undergraduate experience in Flagstaff, and um, so much so that I stayed. I got my master's in collaboration at the same time that I was a part-time teacher. After graduating with her master's in bilingual and multicultural education, she used that degree to advance her career to principal of Marshall Elementary, then on to Coconino High School, where she's been for the past three years. I compare being a high school principal to an elementary school principal by when you're in elementary school, you walk down the hall and all the kids run on you, they hang on your legs and they hug you and they're so happy to see you. Hi, Mrs. Anzuki, how are you? You know, And in high school, they see you and they run the other way. Now, like the peers and mentors that influenced her growing up, she herself is taking advantage of her esteemed position to encourage her high school students to explore NAU as an option when it comes to furthering their education. Being a graduate of NAU, I always encourage students to take a look at what we have to offer here in our own community. When people ask me, well, why NAU, why not ASU? My biggest thing is the same thing that enticed me to come to NAU, and that is the smaller classroom environment. Well, I, I literally had classes of 30 students with one professor, whereas at the same time there were classes of 300 to 500 students, uh, lecture style classes at ASU and U of A. Now, 35 years later or 34 years later, we still find the same things. Zanzuki's advice when it comes to NAU and Flagstaff? It's, it's, there's it's just so much here to offer. Yad e she'e Sharon Singer Dr. Nchia, Twitch eat nishan do tapa hampa shishin, ki ani e dasha che do lasasana dasha nila, a quit ego e dina asana nishla. Hello, my name is Sharon Singer Doctor, and I'm currently director for the Office of Indigenous Student Success. My Navajo clans are Bitterwater, born for Edgewater. Grandfather's clans are Towering House and Mini Goat People. And I'm from Kaibito, Arizona on the Navajo Nation. With Office of Indigenous Student Success, I, we welcome you to this day. Our vision has always been to support our students who attend NAU from whatever background they're coming from as indigenous students. We really want you to succeed here at the university and we hope that you're looking towards visiting us and getting in contact with us so that we can support your success. Our mission since 1994 has to support indigenous students, whether they're Alaska Native, Native American, Native Hawaiian, and those who identify as indigenous. We really want our students to succeed here and to build their community and to build their indigeneity. We value being student-centered, so many of our programs that we offer are focused on our current indigenous college students. We also have a great many partners at the university that we do joint and collaborative events with. We provide innovative services, usually one-to-one -one services with our pro staff. We're really advocating for our students to succeed, to build community and connections, so that you as a student, if you decide to choose NAU, will receive that type of support from our department. As far as our indigenous student body, we have over 100 different tribal nations represented. 
we currently have over 1,900 indigenous students who self-identify as Alaska Native, Native American, Native Hawaiian. And some of the um, information that you might not be familiar with is that NAU is ranked number seven nationally in awarding bachelor's degrees to Native students. And we, our department has been honored to see many of our students graduate. Second is that NAU is usually in the top 10 rankings in 14 specific disciplines for graduating Native students. And photos here include some of our past graduates um, who have attended NAU. Next, our programs that we offer are as follows. We provide guidance and support because we know that as new students come into a new location, a new environment, you're acclimating to a whole new way of living and life. But we also really know that and then stress that you still take advantage of being close to your cultural ties, to being close with your family. So we provide support to prospective students who are considering attending NAU, providing them steps and to be able to connect them to key resources on campus. We support new first year freshman students, continuing students, those who are continuing on in their sophomore, junior, senior year, as well as graduate students, those who are pursuing a master's or a doctoral program. Some of our specific programs are the Indig Bridge to Success program. The past few years, we've been able to have this four day event prior to fall term beginning. This year, we changed our program to a two day virtual event via Zoom. This is a great opportunity for new students to get connected with our department to make friends with others, and to really be able to know how they can transition to university college life. Secondly is our Indigenous Peer Mentorship Program, where new students can be paired up with a seasoned Indigenous college student to receive guidance and learning firsthand from students who have been on that educational journey so far at NAU. And the pictures here show some of our past um, bridge students who have attended. And in some years, we've had as many as 85 students attend. One of the great things about our department is that we're able to collaborate with others. And so we provide different types of events throughout the year. One is to provide uh, you the opportunity to meet with our pro staff, student staff one-to-one. -one. Currently, of course, that would be via phone or Zoom. We provide informative virtual events so far this year. One, our peer mentors hosted a bullet journaling session a couple of weeks ago. And for other events in the future, we're um, partnering with our Native American Cultural Center colleagues and First Gen program to provide some virtual events. One of them is the Lumberjack of Inclusion, which is a university event to highlight and honor our diverse student staff and students. We really want to highlight their achievements as they graduate from the university. And usually in the spring semester, we offer our indigenous convocation ceremony to also honor our graduates at that time. To reach us, please contact us either by phone, email, we are also on various social media platforms. If you have um, Facebook, Snapchat, or Instagram, please be sure to follow us. Next up is a video of the Summer Research Enhancement Project. Thanks for joining us. Many Native American students come to NAU in hopes of earning a degree that will allow them to go back home into their communities and help their people out. In our next story, we'll learn about a special summer program here at NAU that helps Native American students do exactly that. It's called Red Eagle Challenge, and what they're doing is team building. These students are participating in SHREP, the Summer Research Enhancement Program at Diné College in Shiprock, New Mexico. Everything you do is not by yourself. You're depending on other people, and you really have to build the trust. 
Northern Arizona University Center for Health Equity Research, also known as SHARE, collaborates with SHREP. They work with Native American college students from across the Southwest who are interested in careers in public health. It's also giving me research, but allowing me to be within my community and see what I can do to provide and make connections at home. With a focus on health issues that directly impact their communities. Well, diabetes can go either way. Um, you can either gain a lot of weight or you lose a lot of weight. Diabetes is a huge problem, not just among Navajo communities, but in general, overall, developing what the community wants and needs is really um, appreciated in American Indian communities to you know, build capacity of these American Indian students so that they're the ones that are implementing those new programs that you know, are culturally relevant. That way they can build um, healthier Native communities. And it also plays a big role in boosting your self-esteem and making yourself feel better and more confident in what you want to do with your life, how you're going to get there. Not being afraid to try new things. What I was walking towards today was well, my last year at NAU and making my family proud. Welcome back. Thank you for staying with us this today for Indigenous Visit Day. Dr. Ora Merrick Martinez, Executive Director for the Native American Cultural Center, was not able to join us today, so I am filling in for her to share with you some great information about the Native American Cultural Center. The Native American Cultural Center's vision and mission is to really create a community of support, understanding, and success the indigenous way. And that is with using the core values of the four R's, which are respect, responsibility, relationships, and resiliency. The Native American Cultural Center first opened in October 2011, and it took over 30 years of various individuals from alumni to staff, faculty, to students to really ensure that this building came into fruition. And thankfully with the support from the Sam Manuel Band of Mission Indians and various many other contributors and sponsors to the building, it came into existence. So we're really honored to have this facility one of a kind um, in our state um, and very few others located around the country that have Native American cultural centers on their university campuses. The cultural center services include the following. Students have the opportunity to meet with the elder cultural advisor, Lorenzo Max. Students have an opportunity to be able to use the student lounge, which have computers, as well as the Jack Print Station. Students also are welcome to use some of the meeting rooms, such as the story room upstairs to do meditation or to burn sage or sweet grass to offer prayers. It provides students the opportunity to feel welcome and that this is their home away from home. As far as the cultural center's programming, they do have four key components, and that is academic, cultural, health, well-being, and community outreach. A lot of the events they host throughout the year are listed here. Many times they've partnered with the Office of Indigenous Student Success as well as other campus departments to offer these wide range of cultural events. And this is a great opportunity for students such as yourself to get to know other students and meet other faculty, to meet other staff. And so we're really happy that we have this facility to, that is conducive to these types of events. I know that with our Office of Indigenous Student Success and the Cultural Center, we've been partnering together this whole time and really honored to have colleagues like Aura to be able to work together with her to offer these really unique cultural events to our students. In the building itself, there are multi-purpose rooms. We do have a large gathering room, the Patea Conference Rooms, A and B, a computer lounge for students to come in to print their assignments or homework. 
we do have the story meditation room that I just mentioned, as well as the living room by the fire with a fireplace. So that's a really great time where students can come by, especially during the winter months when the fireplace is going and students can have the opportunity to um, be there to meet others, um, maybe even to take time, a break in between classes to come on over. Last is the student meeting room, and that is a room where students can study and um, maybe do some reading, catching up, or taking a break from their classes. The next uh, support area that the Cultural Center offers is to our Indigenous student organizations. We have several here. They include the ACES, the CHE, the Manau, the Abayala and the Hapa Hawaiian Club. These are all active organizations on our campus. Students are very involved with these student organizations. And actually you'll be hearing from Miss Indigenous NAU 2020, Alicia Tsitnachini um, today as well. So very happy to have the Cultural Center work with the students, student organizations to provide support for them to build their leadership skills and to help assist them with any events that they're planning. The Native American Cultural Center is part of the Office of Native American Initiatives. And the, this ONI has a vision to um, seek to transform NAU into the nation's leading university serving Native Americans. And under the ONI umbrella, we have the following departments, including the Native American Cultural Center. And so you'll be hearing a little bit more of, about ONI um, from Dr. Chad Hamill, Vice President for our Office of Native American Initiatives. In closing, I really want to encourage you all to be part, if you can, of a campus tour when we're doing the virtual tour or the in-person tour, to be able to come by the Native American Cultural Center. Outside, we do have a 5,000 square feet patio, as well as an amphitheater. All the native plants that you see on the surrounding the building are native to this region. And so really welcome you. I know that Dr. Aura Merritt Martinez and her team will welcome you to at some point in time contact them um, to see about what their services more in depth. Please follow them on their Facebook and Instagram pages. Um, if you have further questions, feel free to uh, send an email to their nau-nacc at nau.edu. Thank you again for the scene and hearing about the Native American Cultural Center. Next is a video of the Native American Cancer Prevention Program. Thank you. For the past couple of summers, Northern Arizona University has hosted students on campus as part of a unique program called NACP, or Native American Cancer Prevention. And, and I, you know, honestly, I, I feel really confident this year that the mentors that we have really are interested in working with you guys. Dr. Jenny Ingram is addressing this group of college students. Some attend Tribal Community College and others are just starting at Northern Arizona University. They are part of the NACP program, where for 10 weeks they live and work on campus, many of them doing cancer research. Several of these students' lives have already been touched by cancer. Native American Cancer Prevention is a partnership with the Arizona Cancer Center at the University of Arizona. It is funded by the National Cancer Institute at the National Institute of Health. Early on in the 10-week experience, NAU's John Nauman spends time explaining laboratory safety to these NACP students. So we try to get everyone sort of at um, sort of a baseline safety background so that not only are, are safer, but also that they understand a little bit more about what they're doing. This chemistry lab training provides a good foundation for students who end up learning much more after putting on their own lab coats and getting to work. Thank you to Sharon Doctor for sharing a little bit about the Native American Cultural Center. Um, we are going to move forward with the day with our student panel. Um, this is by far one of my most favorite parts of the day so that you can learn about the student experience from current students. 
Um, before we move forward, again, my name is Becca Arvarado. I coordinate Native American and diversity recruitment with university admissions. Um, and at the beginning of today's event, I asked for you to send in your questions about admissions and about NAU to admissions at nau.edu. And so with that, I will be monitoring our inbox so you can send in your questions and we can have them answered. Um, but with, without further ado, I'll go ahead and pass it over to Shandine so she can introduce herself. Do inda Shandine Sauza, Ina a Violet Maya Bauza, Ita a Randy Maya Bauza, Ida a Bayethno, Jean Hunt Bauza, Ita a Harry Hunt Bauza, Ina a Bay or Ita a Bayethno. Charles Mayo, or yeah, Ita'a Bauza, I mean Ita'a, Charles Mayo Bauza, Ina'a, Marjorie Sam Bauza, Dinyi A, Dinyi Yel, Dine Het An Aslan Flagstaff Listo. Hello, my name is Shandine Mayo, and I am currently in Flagstaff, Arizona, attending NAU. I am a creative media and film major, and I am a senior. Ya at Ashik A, Dosha Dine, Shea, Alicia Sinajini, and Shea. Kislachini Nishlindo, Tachin in Bashishin, Dobit Ani Dasha Chedo, Topa, E Dashinale, Zilijin Wate Nasha, Kareya, Kislana Dishagan, and Ayuga Inchta. Hello, everyone. My name is Alicia Sinajini, and I'm a student here at Northern Arizona University. I'm currently majoring in political science, and I'm minoring in applied indigenous studies and Navajo. I'm a third year student, and I'm part of the Navajo tribe. Awesome. Thank you both for being with us here today. Um, so again, please feel free to send in your questions to admissions at nau.edu. I'll go ahead and prompt a question that we usually get from a lot of students just to get you started. Um, but for our first question today, we'll go ahead and start with Sean Dean. Um, why did you choose NAU and how did you prepare for college um, during your high school years? Um, well, one of the major reasons why I chose NAU is because I got an email. I thought it was spam. It was during my junior year and everyone in my and everyone in my high school, it was a very small high school, everyone was like, oh my God, I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna go here. And I was like, I guess I'm going to check out NAU. So I came down here during December, during my junior year for NAU, said yes day. And I really liked it because there was snow and there was a lot of native students and I really enjoyed that. Uh, Flagstaff resembled much of Fairbanks in the ways that I could feel at home and in the ways that I prepared for college. Um, I'm a first generation uh, college student, so not much thought went into it. I, I know that from my father, he said that it'll be very different and I'll have to have a lot of discipline and determination to keep doing and to keep um, putting one foot in front of the other to make it to my senior year. So. Um, so for me, I went ahead and well, how I decided to come to NEU was um, all throughout my four years of high school, I wasn't sure where I wanted to go. I just knew that I wanted to go someplace within the state. Um, and at the time, I thought that I wanted to go to ASU, but I wasn't sure. And then when the time came my senior year, um, I decided to visit NEU campus. And so I came here and I took a college tour with my, uh, my Upward Bound group, which is like a college program that I was taking in high school. Um, we visited NAU and I really, really liked the campus just because at the time when I visited, it was like fall season. So like the leaves are changing and it was really nice and cold. And, uh, and I was also given really good financial aid here at NAU. So that's one of the biggest factors that weighed in on why I chose NAU. Um, in preparing for college, um, what made me really get ready for college was all throughout my high school and like middle school, my mom kept saying like, uh, she would say like, and she'll tell me like, do your best, always do your best in school. And she'll say, she would constantly tell us like, you're going to go to college, you're going to get a degree, even though not, no, nobody in my family has ever gone to college. So just her encouragement and taking the upward bound program uh, when I was when I was I started when I was a freshman in high school and it's basically just a college prep program that helped me prepare for college and I took classes ahead of time before I went to NAU so that's like really what really helped me uh, get ready for college so 
Yeah, that's really important. You had finances, familiarity to maybe some of the weather that you're used to that went into your decision to attend an AU, and lots of preparation and advice from parents. Um, we do get this question a lot, and it came in through the inbox, so I think it's important to ask, um, what is it like adjusting to Flagstaff and the NAU campus? And you mentioned, Shandine, um, the snow, and that was maybe a part of your adjustment to campus. Um, I'll go ahead and start with you with, with the question of what is it like adjusting? Um, well, I like to divide it up by seasons. When I came down here, I was like, oh my gosh, this is great. Like, when I'm back home during the summertime, the sun doesn't set and there's lots of mosquitoes and it's a little chilly. So when I came down here and I was walking around campus, the sun was starting to set and I was like, oh my gosh, what's happening? What is this? I thought the world was ending. And the, I was with a group of native students and they're like, Skoden. And I was stood there confused. And I was like, what are you saying? And they're like, let's go, the sun is setting. And I was like, this is crazy. This is not normal. Um, and so that was one of the like first exposures that I had to like get my head in the game and say that this isn't home. But one of the ways that I transitioned and was able to get used to it was to kind of picture it a little larger in the ways that Flagstaff and Fairbanks are very sim similar in the ways that there are a lot of granolas, there's a lot of trees, it's a mountain town, and there's a lot of potholes in the roads. So it, it made me feel at home. <laughs> <laughs> So for me, uh, what helped me adjust to going, coming here to school at NAU. Um, so all throughout my, like all throughout my life basically, I lived on the reservation, but I didn't live too far from Flagstaff. So I came to Flagstaff like probably once a month and I would come here, go to the, go to the movies, go to Sam's Club and shop and then go home. It was like a day trip and so I was well acquainted with Flagstaff, and so adjusting to Flagstaff itself, it wasn't too much of a change for me just because I came here a lot and the weather was much better here than where I was from. So like adjusting to the weather was like, it wasn't too difficult because I really enjoyed the weather. Um, but when I started my freshman year, uh, we had like a huge snowstorm and that was like bigger than like I've ever experienced because on the reservation like where I live, there wasn't a lot of snow. And so the snow was something that was really new to me. Um, but overall, I really enjoyed it. So I think that me just enjoying it helped me adjust to it. So, yeah. Awesome, thank you both. Um, so for our next question, I think we're getting into more so um, the focus on the focus on um, connecting with family and, and maintaining those connections to your home while you're at NAU. And so our next question is first gonna go to Alicia. Um, how do you stay connected to your family and your culture while, while being away from home? Um, yeah, so for me, uh, here at NAU, there's a, the Native American Culture Center. And when I started here at NAU, uh, that was like one of the very first places that I was introduced to and I became well acquainted with it because um, when I started I did the bridges program so because of that program I was very comfortable coming to the NAC and when I was there I, met, I made like a lot of other friends who were Native American and we had a lot in common so it was like talking to them was like talking to like my family um, and then there's also a, a like a room at the Native American Culture Center called the story room um, that's one of the few places on campus where you can sit and you can see like the mountain, but you can't see the road. So uh, that room itself, uh, my friends and I, we go there and we do like uh, drum ties. Uh, we, we like hang out and we um, usually kind of recuperate. And so like that itself, we usually come together and like it's a really good reminder of home. So it, it, that's how I stayed in touch with my culture. and being able to speak to other Native American students and other Navajo students who could speak Navajo, like it helped me stay connected to home and stay connected to my culture, so. Yeah. Um, one of the ways that I stayed connected was, well, like Alicia, I went to the Native American um, building a lot, just my freshman year, just to get acquainted. And then after that, I started to realize that 
I started to miss Alaska much more, and I reminded of myself why I came down here, and I had visited the reservation on and off just to visit my grandmother and to kind of like get away from campus life, and that was one way that I connected to like my Navajo side. And then the other way that I connected to um, my Koyukon Athabascan side was whenever I had film assignments, I'd always make it about issues back home, and those were the ways that I was able to um, connect. Yeah, some common themes there. I think um, sharing your story and, and, and being able to speak through that way and stay connected to your culture that way is really important. Um, and the story room is one of my favorite rooms on campus at the Native American Cultural Center, particularly because you have such a beautiful view of the sacred peaks. And so it's a great way to not only be able to um, be in a space where you feel comfortable, but just share about, about your upbringing and your stories. Um, another really great question um, that we received is, how do you feel or do you feel like you are supported academically um, and what kind of resources? We have a lot of tutoring resources across campus and peer mentoring, but what kind of resources have you used to be successful in your classes? And I'll go ahead and pass that to Sean Dean first to share. Well, I know that it was a little rough starting out here at NAU because I know that in my experience um, during my freshman year, there was just kind of little comments of let's have a powwow over here or um, whenever I turned in an assignment, it'd be like, whoa, that's too cultural, like tone it down. Or um, other things such as I watched Nanook of the North in class and everyone in the class was like, oh my God, those savages. And I'd be like, those are my people. <laughs> And so I know that a lot of times I felt stressed and the ways that I reached out to um, the NAU campus was through the um, OIS. When I was a freshman, I had a peer mentor and they were a great support network. And then as I transitioned from that period, I had reached out to the, um, not just like in those cultural, like stressful areas, but just in academic areas as well. I went out to, I reached out to the, academic center and from there I learned a lot of great resources such as like taking notes, taking breaks and um, how to kind of put my cultural experience into the kind of the western or like academic colonial framework of thinking. And so there's just a lot of times where it was like that but reaching out to the OIST building and the academic um, su success center was very helpful. Um, yeah, for me, uh, I think that what really helped me here at NEU, when I started out, um, like I was saying, I started in the Bridges program, and so I had a lot of uh, help there. There was like, I had my peer mentor and then other peer mentors along the way um, that were there for me, and they like reached out and they were asking like, how are you doing in school? Uh, like, do you have any... Uh, concerns, um, are you stressed out about anything? And we would have little meetings where we would meet at the, at the Native American Cultural Center. And we would go there and I would sit down with them and just tell them like what's going on. And they would tell me like, you know, this is what, this it's similar to what happened to me. They would give me their take on the situation and just their support itself as peer mentors. Like that really helped me a lot. And then also on the academic side, um, for my, a lot of my political science classes, they require me to write a lot of like essays. So the writing commons is one of the biggest places that has been a big help in writing my papers. And then also my professors, uh, most of my professors have been really nice so far. Um, I usually go to their office hours and I like just take the time to get to know them. Uh, most times they're really welcoming, they're really helpful and they want to help you. And so like, I think that one of the biggest things that really helped me was connecting with my professors. So that's one of the biggest help I've had so far in my academic career. So on the academic side, I'm so glad both of you talked about tutoring and reaching out to the academic success centers um, and your faculty because all tutoring is free on campus. And I think it's so important that we normalize that students seek out tutoring and get that additional support, especially because it's there um, free of charge. Um, on the more social side, I'm so glad you, you talked about, Shandine, the Office of Indigenous Student Success. 
Um, the Office of Indigenous Student Success, as you may have learned in their presentation, has the IndigiBridge to Success program for all Indigenous identifying students. And so it's important um, that we kind of start out your year on the right foot and, and you can participate in that program um, and get connected with folks from all backgrounds um, who identify as Indigenous. And so um, thank you for answering that question. Um, for another question that came in, um, this one gets more into your day-to-day -day schedule. Um, and we can go ahead and, and start with Alicia. Um, what is the typical day schedule for you from the morning to the evening, if you'd like to map that out? Uh, so usually in the morning, I wake up around like, uh, usually it's between like seven or eight. And so I wake up, I get dressed, um, I eat breakfast. And so usually by nine o'clock, I'm ready to like get started. And so if it's a, if it's a Tuesday, um, I have class at 935. So I get ready for class. I like make sure I have everything in order. I go to my first class and then that usually ends by 11, 1150. And so I get out of class and then from there I go eat lunch. And then after lunch, I come back. I usually cook my own lunch because I live in my apartment right now and I'm, most of my classes are online. So I just cook and then I do the dishes. So usually by, I'd say around one o'clock, I'm pretty much done with like lunch and everything. And then by one o'clock, I start studying from one to about five. And so during that time I do homework, I study, I look back on notes and I, I usually take the time from like five to like six to like kind of just calm down and take a break and then like kind of reflect on the stuff I've done so far that day. And then I look at what's next to do. I kind of make like a to-do list of like homework I have or like things that are coming up that I should look ahead for. And then I usually start my homework again around seven or sometimes like if I want to take a long break, I like start around eight. Mm -hmm. And then like for me, I'm kind of a night owl. So I'll stay up till like two, possibly three in the morning, but usually like that's how long it goes just doing homework. So that, that's usually how my day goes. Oh, um, I am not an, a night owl. I, I can't stay up, especially, okay, well, I can be a night owl when it's like finals and I pull an all-nighter and then I wake up and I'm like, oh my God. Um, but usually when I have it under control, Mondays, I wake up, I cook pancakes, I cook, I have cereal, I have like sausage, it's a great day, the birds are singing and <laughs> um, <laughs> I do my homework, sometimes the right before it's due. Um, but I do my homework and then I go to my like fitness class and that's about 50 minutes and that ends at noon. And then from noon to two, I just do my homework straight through and I try to like, um, try to put to piece together my film assignments. And then if I get a like, a, like a creative block, I stop and then I start like reading. And then right then again, my class starts from like 2.40 to 3.30. And then right from 3.30 to 4, I have a small break. And then I log into like Zoom. And then I go for my class from um, like 6. It's a two and a half hour class, like from 6 to 7.30. And then there, like I'm basically brain dead. And then so I cook myself dinner. And I'm just like, Shh, yeah, like I love dinner because I just like, it's just, it de-stresses. Like it's a meditative form. And... And then from there, I just like do my homework all the way until 10, and then I call it quits, and then I go to bed, and then I wake up and I do the same thing every day until I graduate. Yeah. <laughs> Great, we got that goal for graduation in mind, <laughs> especially as a senior right now. Awesome, thank you for sharing. Um, so I wanna pass this question to Alicia first because it's clear that you're in an organization. And so we received a question, um, what kind of student organizations are you involved with and, and how do you balance your involvement on campus um, with your academics? And you talked a little bit about that um, in your, just your day to day, um, but we'd like to learn a little bit more about that kind of involvement and the balance piece. Um, yeah, so for me, I'm currently part of the Miss Indigenous NAU organization. I'm the current Miss Indigenous NAU 2020. Um, for me, I, uh, I'm considered the, I'm the president of the organization, so there's a lot of my play in running that organization itself. Um, I usually have my club meetings on Wednesdays, and then like after Wednesdays, I take the time to 
kind of regroup with my, um, like the vice president and the secretary and the treasurer. So we usually come together and we talk about like what we discussed during the meetings. And then we usually do that like on Fridays or Thursdays. And then uh, the next following week, we'll, I'll, I'll email um, Sharon Doctor. She's part of the, one of the advisors for the organization. And so I'll usually email her like what we discussed and then we'll talk with her and get her opinion on some of the things we talk about. Um, usually it's about future events. And so I, th I communicate with her and then uh, we, we use that information to prepare for the following meeting. And so I usually spend a lot of time um, Thursdays, Fridays, and then uh, Mondays preparing for the following meeting. And so it's not, not too difficult trying to work into my schedule just because um, most of my classes are online. So I'm spending a lot of time in my apartment all day. So it's just a matter of communicating and keeping up with people. So that's usually how I work that into my schedule every day. So. Uh, when I was in clubs during my freshman and sophomore year, um, they were mostly in the evening. So it was a nice break from like the academic life. And um, when I had gone to those meetings in the evening times, by that time I had, um, it was like a break from my homework. And so it was just a scheduled time when I would just go to those meetings and visit with the other native students. And even after when I had, um, even after those meetings, all of the students would be like, let's do homework or let's go eat. And after that, it would just be kind of like a, it just flows right into my schedule, so. Awesome, thank you both. Um, so we received this question and I wanted to save it for last um, because I think it's really important to be able to kind of pass on a little bit of your story as we talked about um, to share some advice with others on how to be successful as you move from high school um, into a university setting. And so the question we received is, what kind of advice would you give your past self um, and what is something you wish you would have known about college before getting here? So I know that's a tough one, um, but we would definitely value your thoughts. And so um, if you'd like to go first, Alicia, I can pass it on to you. Um, so for me, uh, what I would tell my younger self is that whenever you're feeling like you can't do what you're like when you, once you get to college and then you get this kind of discouraging feeling that you probably can't do it or you can't make it as far as you've gone or you just get this really weird feeling when you're a freshman that you're not supposed to be there. Um, especially as in like indigenous students, like that's a feeling that I got constantly because I came from the reservation and then that's the place where no one goes to college. And then for me to come here, I was thinking like, this is, I'm so out of place, like this isn't where I'm supposed to be. But I kept telling myself that, you know, I worked so hard throughout high school to get where I am. I can't, and my, my parents have been encouraging me. My grandparents have been encouraging me. And like all of that, I thought about them and I thought about all the things that they've done for me. And that itself like really pushed me to do my best throughout college. And at the same time, with trying to trying to figure out um, like how to do college, it was very it was just a very stressful time. Um, but for me, what I would tell myself my what I would tell my younger self is that just keep going, just keep doing your best. Um, you know, it's always going to get better. You can't if once you hit rock bottom, like you, you can just keep going back. You just, it, uh, the only way you can go is up, basically. Um, what was the second part of your question? Um, what is one? What is something you wish you would have known about college before getting here? Mm, I think I wish I would have known about just how nice everybody can be, because at first I was really scared to come to college because everyone I thought it's going to be very scary talking to new people, but I mean if I had not been so scared I would have gone out more, but. I think that if I had known that people, <laughs> people are surprisingly really, really nice. So I think if I knew that, I would have gone out of my shell way more often. <laughs> so. One thing that I would tell my younger self is that 
well, when I began, I was like, woo, oh my gosh, this is college. I never really had much thought into it, and it kind of went by really fast. And it wasn't until I was off the meal plan and that um, I was, I wasn't, I'm not living on campus, that it hit me that you have to have rent, you have responsibilities of taking care of yourself, uh, mentally, physically, spiritually, and that's a lot of responsibility, and that you have to have good time management to meet deadlines, and that you're part of a larger picture. And when I was younger, I didn't, especially as a freshman, I didn't understand that. And if I could tell my younger self that now, my younger self would have been like, pff, pff, you know, but now that I'm older, it's, it's a lot of responsibility and it takes a lot of time to get to know yourself outside of your family. So, and what's the second part? <laughs> what is something you wish you would have known about college uh, before getting here? Oh, um, something I wish I would have known about college before getting here is that, hmm, there's a lot of things actually that, um, there are Native students on campus that I wish I would have known about that, as well as um, you can send mail off, off of the campus back home, and um, that you can have time fly away from you in the ways that if you don't get your head in the game and if you start to focus on friends or too much, um, clubs and all that can all get away from you and I know that could be hard to kind of balance those things and so that's one thing that I wish I would have known about college is how to balance those two academic and social lives. Awesome. So big takeaways is that you belong here um, and you're part of a bigger story and you're part of a bigger picture. Um, thank you both to Shandine as well as Alicia um, for your time and being on our panel. Um, we are so grateful for you partaking in Indigenous Visit Day today and learning a little bit more about our institution. Um, we invite you to view this video next about other students um, on why they chose NAU as well. Thank you. Um, I chose NAU because it was close, or it is close to the reservation. And I wanted to learn more about like my Navajo heritage and how that like plays into who I am and who I want to be. I chose NEU originally for the outdoor recreation and four seasons that Flagstaff has to offer. Um, and now that I've been here, um, I really do appreciate the opportunity that Flagstaff and NEU has given me. I decided to choose NEU mainly because of the scholarships and the grants I was being given and also because we have all four seasons here which is something we can't experience back home. Yes, 100% I was nervous. I was going to a state I've never been before and I didn't know what to expect but at the same time I was excited. You know, it's okay to be nervous. Being nervous means that something important is going to happen. <laughs> Chad Hamill, Chinook Kaimi Clu East West, Chin Spokane. Good day, everyone. My name is Chad Hamill. I'm from the Spokane Tribe in Washington State, and I serve as Vice President for Native American Initiatives here at NAU. I work with the President, our campus community, and our team in the Office of Native American Initiatives to advance our strategic goal to be the leading university serving Native Americans. That sets us apart from other universities and colleges. And why that's important to you is it means when you come here as a student, you will be a priority. We are prepared to support you in unparalleled ways, both culturally and academically. So whatever your passion might be, maybe it's public health, maybe it's forestry, engineering, art, music. Maybe you wanna work for your tribe and be a tribal leader and focus on Native nation building. Whatever it is, at NAU, you'll get the support you need to realize your dreams, to get that degree and bring your talents back to your home communities and your families. So we'll look forward to seeing you here at NAU as a student. Nem hal We'll see you again. Lem nemch. And from here, we'll go to the closing segment of our program today.
Like an astronaut that's scared of heights With a heart that's beating at the speed of light You've been waiting for this feeling all your life Sometimes it's just hard to realize When you start Madness.